welcome back to Rabbit Ridge Outdoors. Today's episode, we're taking a legendary trip on the Trinity River here near Palestine. We're gonna take it all the way to Baytown, nearly 550 miles from here. Got a lot of gear to bring, a lot of planning to do. In this episode, we're gonna go through all of it to show how we made this trip happen. Gonna be a good one. Y'all stick around. Well, we're nearly 20 miles into the trip. There's the first bridge there. Lost a prop. The uh, captain of this boat had to walk to his friend's house to get a new one. Luckily, he knows where it's at. But if he didn't, that's why I printed up these maps here. 15 maps all the way to the coast to Baytown. Also have an atlas here to see roads and a compass. We have a long way to go. Starting nearly here on the map all the way down to Baytown. We're probably 500 and 535 miles from Baytown from here. We have the scale of the map. I made sure to print all the maps out the exact same scale so you can use a ruler or a stick to measure straight lines. You could also take a string and actually bend it through the river to find out river miles. Now another key point of the navigation is I have a clicker mounted here on the boat. Every time I cross a river bend, I give it a click using the roads and the bridges as checkpoints. Count every hard bend afterwards. I can look back from the map. There's the bridge. And I can count heavy, heavy river bends on my clicker and know exactly where we're at. So here we are. We made the Highway 7 here at Locking Dam. We got to get around the dam. Pretty dangerous tailwaters right there. It's, that would flip a boat quick. We got to shoot around over there to the boat chute. It's going to be pretty rough, but he'll make it through it. Long way down. Big dam. Only about 450 miles to go. That way. You'd sink if you flip the back of the boat right there. Do not turn. We could, there's some way we could get on this. Not really. That's bad, that's, that's really bad. That's, that's terrifying. Yeah, that's what success looks like right there. Through the raging rapids. Baytown, here we come. Huh? How'd y'all get off? Hey, yeah, we picked it up. I couldn't pick it up by myself. My back hurts so bad right now. <laughs> Dude, I was laying in the floor of my boat, that one that went above it. Yeah. That's fucking walk across. I was laying in the floor of my boat with my feet against that one. Oh, man. Yeah. Was it scary when it hit the water? It was terrifying. No, no, man. We got it what? off. It went off as smooth as could be. But whenever I landed it, yeah, it was terrifying. Yeah. I thought it fixed a flip. I it seen that one in the water, and I knew if the back spun, it was fixing to roll me. Oh, yeah. Well, we found us a sandbar. We're setting up camp now. We're about 160 miles into the trip, about two hours from Livingston. We've been taking on some water. We've had to bail it out. But starting from, we have cleared one, two, three, three full maps, three and a half maps since we started. We're at Highway 21 now, starting a little north of 8479. Come along, peace. About to set up camp, get a fire going, cook us some supper. I want to go over what I carry in my pack, at least on a trip like this. Carrying two uh, two canteens, quart canteens with the kidney cans. All army style with the carry pouches, just a regular canteen. It's got the pouches on the side for iodine tablets. Get back, dog. Pouches on the side for the iodine tablets, water purification tabs. And also have the kidney can that goes with the canteen. It's got the two folding handles. Canteen fits inside of it, inside the pouch. You can use this to boil water, cook out of, whatnot. I also carry a secondary sort of a mess kit. It doubles over as storage also. 
got a nice folding lid. Stanley makes this, it's pretty good. It's got a lid that snaps onto it. Carry my coffee seasonings, extra cup. And this is stainless, so you can get it hot, you can cook in it, that's fine. Also carry French press. About the handiest thing you could ever have on a camping trip like this. Get back, dog. Top unscrews. It's a thermos and a French press, so you can make your coffee. Put your coffee in here. You can boil it in the French press, the boil it in the kidney can, pour it in here, press your coffee out, put your lid back on, and use it as a thermos so you're not wasting something else to drink out of. Very handy, good thing to have around. So on the way EDC, I carry a Cutco K-Bar. They make a nice K-Bar. Got a polymer sheath, blade snaps in, get a strap up top. Also keep a strap down around the bottom of the sheath around my leg. Got a black cock holster, 1911 guy all the way. Carry a military issued magazine pouch in the back. Keep a spare magazine right there handy. Also carry extra pocket knife and a few extra lighters on me in case I need it. And that's pretty much all I carry on my person. The rest is in the pack or dry boxes in the boat. Now inside the pack, I'm carrying extra BDU sleeves, definitely extra socks, <clears throat> a lot of canned goods. Uh, high calorie stuff, lots of chili, high protein stuff, lots of canned fish, and I also have a solar charger. Pretty nice, got a flashlight on it. Pretty cool, Swiss Tech. First time I've used it, but pretty nice. Uh, use this to charge the phone, charge the camera, rock and roll. Also carry a fish kit, fishing kit, really small, but I've got some thick trot line string in there and about 60 pound braided lines, steel leaders, a few spoons, oddball weights, and a wide assortment of hooks. So you can use the tiny hooks to catch bait. And after you catch bait, you can upgrade to the trot line string, set up some stronger, bigger hooks, bigger bait fish, catch bigger fish. That's about all you need in the way of a fishing kit. I would suggest avoiding mono because it's just a tangled up mess. Get that out of the way. And in this pouch is a bunch of random stuff. Headlight, gotta have a headlight. Gotta have a good flashlight. One thing I like to do with the flashlights, keep them from coming open, turning on inside the bag, is take a small piece of plastic, take the cap off the back of the flashlight, put the piece of plastic in there, put the cap back on, the flashlight won't come on while it rattles in your bag. And else I like to carry the tiny camp stove. It's a chemical burner. This unfolds. That unfolds. You can put a chemical burner in the middle of it. It'll burn long enough to boil a quart of water. Very handy to have. Doesn't take up any room. In here I just have extra lighters, bug spray, more lighters, batteries, and markers for marking the map. Now I know my, my camping situation is rather primitive, but I do like to use a tarp because it's versatile. And I like to use a wool blanket because even if it's wet, it's still warm. I wrap up the wool blanket inside of the tarp, roll all that back up, and I strap it to the straps on the Atlas pack. Normally I have it sitting right here under the flap. Pull the flap up over the roll, and then take these straps, pull it down tight. It keeps the bed roll and the tarp secure to the pack. Another nice thing about these Atlas packs is few modifications you can undo these buckles and take the pack off of the frame off of this metal frame and you can carry this metal frame because it's still attached to your slings to your braces to your straps and you can carry firewood or lug any kind of heavy thing to and from your camp i'm a big fan of the uh the atlas packs well here we are day two just broke camp here at highway 21 and that should put us in Livingston in two or three hours. We'll be here at the headwaters of the lake near Sebastopol. Get on to Baytown.
Well, here we are, about 10.30 in the morning. Already made it to Riverside. Got a few more miles to go, we'll be in Lake Livingston. Well, we're in Livingston, everything was going smoothly until it hit a stump and ripped the motor off. About caught it in my lap running. Chewed up the side of the boat. Close call, but luckily got a backup motor and should still be on schedule. But it ripped the mount clean off of it. That's terrible. <laughs> I still hear his voice trembling. Yeah. He's I'm scared. I, I want to watch this video because you're going to see him shaking the camera. I about ate that. Th that thing about landed in my lap running. <laughs> I'm scared, man. I'm over here stress eating Doritos and. <laughs> Oh, but we're about halfway to Baytown. About another 250 more miles that way. I think we're about 280 miles that way. Well, here we are, backside of Livingston. There's the dam there. We're back in the river. New motor. Yep, yeah, new motor. Don't forget about that. <laughs> you can't leave them with a cliffhanger. Last time I seen this, it was hanging in the water. <laughs> Shit, that was a heck of a cliffhanger. Man, look what it did to the boat. Oh, I almost caught that in my lap. And we do have a leak. Luckily, we've got a coffee can. About all we need. Bail it out as we go. But what do you reckon? 200, a little over 200 miles? Yeah. A little over 200 miles. Baytown, here we come. Well, this is day three. Just broke camp. About eight o'clock in the morning. We made it a long ways. Made it through one, two, three, four, five. Through Lake Livingston, six, seven, eight full maps. We're camped right here on the sandbar, starting on this map. We're probably 20, 30 miles south of Livingston now. We're well on our way. Only a little ways to go that way here we are 7 787 got a little little four foot gator sitting on the bank right there we've seen a bunch of them we've probably seen 30 40 alligators on the way got it oh, yeah, here one, we go. one two, two three <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoa, that was up there! <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, Highway 10, where the headwaters of the Gulf. We'll be there shortly. Here we are, Trinity Bay. We've made it to the ocean. We're at the ocean. The ocean. Sure. Well, we made it. <laughs> the whole trip. 550 miles. One prop, one boat motor, and <laughs> a bunch of sunburns. Casualties of war. Yeah, man, oh man. Huh? Wow. No land to be seen. Crazy, we're only, we're only in a couple feet of water. We're almost to Baytown. Baytown's about five miles that way. We're leaking bad. We ripped off uh, the braze on the holes in the boat over uh, Lock and Dam, and it's just been getting worse ever since. Bay's pretty rough. We're taking in water on the back of the transom. It's been rough. We've gone, what, what do you reckon, 30 miles? At least, At least yeah, 30, 30, 40, 30 or 40 miles of ocean. It's been scary. 25 horse motor. 1436 riveted John boat. There's shrimp boats over there. And we made it all the way to O'Neill's. Look at the size of these boats. Good Lord, those are some big boats. A lot bigger than a 1436 John boat, that's for sure. That's a nice boat. them boats and we are baytown hey 550 miles well we 
We've made it to the O'Neill Sports Bar. It's been a long trip, 550 miles. Came up there, had us a good supper. Now it's time to go home. So I guess uh appreciate y'all watching. Until next time.